Thanks for joining. This is Movado, and I'm back here in a Seven Days to Die video. That's right, Seven Days to Die. It's been quite a long time, I think, uh, since I've done a video, but I am back here. I'm on the Anvil server. Uh, Anvil fired up a public server. That's where I def I've done some of my Empyrean videos. Uh, it's day 189. It's the Wastelands. It's Blood Moon Day. I wanted to do a quick video. Number one, I've done a video on the Tunnel of Terror before. I've made a few modifications. I've got one in place here in the Wastelands to take advantage of the Horde boost, but I was going to do a quick overview of how the Tunnel of Terror is built, give a quick demonstration down below the bunker that we have here. Uh, if you're not familiar with this base, this is not one of those drop bases. There's no loops in it. There's no, like, you know, infinite cycling of zombies this base is really built on the premise of kill or be killed zombies enter and you got to kill them and that is how it is so let's go up top let's let's see what is this tunnel of terror so obviously you can see it is day 189 there's a lot of plating all around this base uh it has been slowly expanded on over time that is done in case you get the cops that explode you get a demolisher explosion out there something like that but let's head up and let's see how this base works. So you can see from the sides, there are some steps. Steps on this side that lead into a tunnel. Steps on this side, again, that lead into that same tunnel. The, the pathing is simple. The zombies come up that tunnel or up those steps. They enter this tunnel. They can run through this tunnel around this corner and up the steps. And this is where you are. That's it. That's that very simple. The pathing is easy. Up here, the strategy is you can just simply stand up here and you can shoot them as they come up. But the trick is that the zombies can't actually make it through this tunnel. This tunnel is a kill tunnel. Everything that enters dies within a very short period of time. And the reason why is because of all the electronics that I have set up here. You can see eight dart traps on this side, eight dart traps on that side. And let's head in here and I'll show you some of the wiring and how this is actually made. So the concept is simple. All the generators are in here. You've got electric fence posts that run the length of this tunnel. You've got trip wires that also run the length of this tunnel. It is all powered in this room. I keep that room separately for a couple different reasons, but those wires run the length. When a zombie enters, it trips the tripwire, they immediately get shocked and stunned, and while they're stunned, the four dart traps in that row immediately start shooting them. So dart traps put out, I believe, something like two darts per second, so call it eight darts per second a zombie is taking, two from the front, two from behind. Now, when you get into blood moons... Um, you do get sometimes congestion of, of multiple guys in there, but that's where the value of having the two dart traps in the front shooting through to the back uh, is really helpful. That ensures the front zombie is always getting hit by at least half the darts. Now with the stunning that happens, and with those little poles you can see in there as well, uh, it's really hard for the zombies to get through there. So let's take a look a little bit closer at that tunnel. I am not going to enter because this is on, it is live, I will die within about two seconds. <laughs> Alright, so those poles you can see are simply obstacles. Those are put in there so that way the zombies can't simply run through. They have to run into the pole, they have to jump over the pole, they come down, they have to run into the second pole, they have to jump over that. Well, all that's happening, they're getting hit with tons of darts, they're getting shocked, they simply cannot make it through if this thing is up and running. So that's how this base works. For the player, personally, I prefer just to stand up on top. I like to stand up on top, shoot them as they're coming up the stairs, shoot them as they're coming up in the distance. Sometimes if I see a few of them like building up in here, I may turn and shoot them. But generally, I like to freewheel and shoot them as they approach. The other way to do it is if you're getting a lot of... like vultures or if you're early game and you just don't have good armor you can always stand in this cage you can stand in here and you can just shoot them as they come in so there's a couple different ways to do it you can shoot them as they come up the steps uh, this offers a lot of protection though so vultures can't hit you cops generally won't spit at you although if you're in this front corner they can get line of sight through these corners and they can sometimes spit at you there so something to keep in mind all right well that is Kind of the overview of the base. Next, I wanted to talk a little bit about 
how is it built? How did I build this? How did I decide where to do it? So when I build this base, I always build it with the steps first. That is a two by two square. So two by two. I build a two by two square and I go four blocks tall. So the floor of this, um, there's three blocks of clearance here. The floor is the fourth block up and then I just build the steps all the way out to complete that. Then from there I decide this is a multiplayer server. So in this case I went four blocks wide. So this is a four block wide tunnel. If you're playing solo you could do it with smaller blood moons. You could do a two or maybe a three block wide. Um, four block wide is pretty good. That's, that's going to handle quite large zombies. Uh, one of the earlier blood moons we had, I think five people on here. The hordes were just insanely massive, uh, and it had no problem handling that blood moon. So, um, again, this is four blocks wide. And then what I do is I build this up two by two. I count one for each wall, the however many blocks wide. So in this case, I wanted it four blocks wide plus the walls. So then I built six blocks across, and I built the steps over there. And that was the first thing that I built, is just getting the steps in place. Then there's a couple things when you're building this base you really want to keep in mind, and that's with the electronics. So let me go up to the top and I'll show you. Um, because to wire this all in can be difficult. So the block work that I have in front of those dart traps all has to get put in absolutely last in the space. So make sure that when you're doing this, you can frame up the tunnel, you can build up the stairs, you can basically build the whole shell of this. Uh, but never put blocks in front of any electronics until you have it all wired. Um, now with the wiring, I believe there's a 14 block limit. So you have dart, so from the electric fence post on one side, the next one can be no longer than 14 blocks apart. So if you'll notice, on this side, the back one is the electric fence, or is the tripwire. The front one is the electric fence. On the other side, I actually have that reversed. On this side, I have the tripwire as the front, the electric fence post is the back. And I did that so that way they could both stay within that 14 block limit from the other. So you always have to be careful of that 14 block limit. Uh, and that's why things are built the way they are, is to make sure I did not exceed that. So when you come in inside this tunnel, there is actually a one block opening. Let me see if I have a block on me. Oh, I don't have any wood on me either. That's fine. Cobblestone will work. Three seconds. So there is a, essentially, and you can see it here, there's a one block, one block where the, before that pole is. That pole is in the second block. Actually, that's not helping. The pole is in the second block. Then there's another empty block, and then there's another pole. So there is not an empty block behind that pole. That pole fulfills this last block. And then there's immediately the two-block corner. So if you look at this tunnel, you've got one, two, three, four with the, with the pole, five empty, six, seven, eight. This is an eight-block long tunnel. Then behind that, I have one block, two blocks, and then dart trap. And I always do two blocks here, and I always do the arrow slits. Those are arrow slit blocks. The darts will pass through that no problem. And also, even though the dart traps are facing each other, they do not damage each other. So keep that in mind. They will never damage each other at all. So I always do the arrow slits because that's going to give some physical blocking of any type of explosions. Uh, the iron bars I have in there so that way you have good visibility from inside this cage. Because you can see if I had blocks and blocks, full blocks here, it would really reduce the, the visibility and I'd have to be up here. So I put all the iron bars in there to give you better visibility so you can shoot through everything. The other thing I want to point out are these weird angled blocks that I have in here. I put those in there so that way you can actually repair the floor during the fight if something were to happen. You cannot repair through solid bars, but by using these angled bars, there's a million different ways you could do this. Um, that allows you some gaps to do some repairs through these iron bars during the battle. So let's say you hit a demolisher um, inside this tunnel and it blows up. You could repair the block damage right in here. However, with this, to, with this base, I highly recommend never shooting a demolisher. Just simply let him run into the base. He will die. He will die pretty quickly. Now, with that being said, I talked about how it's wired up. 
uh, a little bit how to set it up for the wiring portion how to wire this up it's really simple it's going to look complicated but it's really actually simple <laughs> you ready here we go so this top generator runs the entire base this bottom one runs the lighting only so i'm going to focus on this top one what i have it doing is i have it going from uh oh yeah okay so from the generator to the switch to the relay and then distributed it out so from the relay so basically you're going generator to electric fence post to the other side fence post connects to the other side so that's the direction of the electricity the direction matters because during the fight an electric fence post will take damage and it all it is always the second in the circuit so i intentionally wired it up so the first one is here the second one is on the other side and then i can repair it from the other side inside that cage so i never have to come in here during the fight so it goes relay electric fence post to the other side and that one is done for the trip wires it's the same thing it goes relay to trip wire the trip wire connects to the other trip wire on the other side and then when the trip wire gets tripped that goes into the dart traps so the wiring that i have on the dart traps is actually as such where i go from this trip wire into this bottom dart trap and then i then i connect this bottom dart trap to the top dart trap and I connect this bottom dart trap to the bottom dart trap on the other side. So I connect bottom to top, bottom to bottom, and then on that side I connect the bottom to the top. So what that does is all four of them run in sync. Now all those connections have to be done before you put any block work in front of them. Those iron bars cannot be there. These arrow slits, these iron bars below cannot be there. Those all have to be out before you do all that wiring. That's always the last thing you put in. Now you can see here, I have these little angled blocks so I can repair these posts from right here. These are the electric fence posts that will take damage. I just repair them right here. One right click, one right click, one right click, and it's repaired. So that's kind of how that works. Now these doors I put on here, I've actually noticed that if you close the doors while you're in here, the zombies tend to pound on the walls a little bit more than if you leave them open. So that's kind of a mix, whatever. Um, one thing I didn't talk about was tunnel height. This tunnel is four blocks tall. tall. Uh, maybe you noticed that already because you got two blocks tall of dart traps, two blocks tall here. And then obviously all of the iron bars over the top. So that is how this is made. Now, the one thing we haven't gotten to, and we have Blood Moon coming up here in just a couple hours, is the bunker. So what I always do with this base, and this is my favorite part about this base, since this is really an automated base, a zombie walks up and it dies, I always love putting a bunker underneath it. So we've been down here, we've been down here, we've got a few storage chests. Look at this hatch. This hatch is probably one of my favorite part about all of it. Let's head down here. This is the bunker. The nice thing with building a bunker below the space is if you generate a screamer, the screamer simply walks into the dart trap tunnel, it instantly dies. Uh, they path to doors and hatches, and since there's a door and a hatch here, this is where it's going to want to go. Alright, so we take the shaft down, we enter a room, hey if you're a zombie you get shot by a turret, otherwise let's go into the bunker. This is a very efficient bunker, you can see. Lots of stuff jam-packed in a small room, lots of storage down here, lots of storage down here, and even more storage that we haven't expanded into. Yeah, lots and lots of storage. We've got some hydroponics down here, we've got our beds shoved in the corner. This isn't anything fancy, but this is enough to get everything we need. we got six forges, four chem stations, cooking stations, little oven. Again, some of these are custom on the server. Um, yeah, cement stations. Everything's broken up, organized generally pretty well. Uh, the other thing that's really cool that I like to do is this. Yes, that is water, and yes, you can drink it. This is unlimited in-base water. So the way you build this is you need a bucket. In your inventory, you can cre create a bucket right here with just a couple forged iron. You go to any water source in the world, you right-click it, you fill that bucket. Then you come down here and with blocks, you build a two block by two block square, open square. I decided to use the back side of stairs for it, steps, um, to create that, that area. 
then you take that bucket of water you come in here and stand in here and you right click and you dump it in here and it will fill this area that bucket of water then from there in your helmet you put the water purifier mod and then if you have the water purifier mod you can drink this water to infinity and stuff yourself until you explode so just a little tip there this is perfect it's a great addition to any base it can be done anywhere um, to get the unlimited in base water so you're not having to worry about going out and finding all those bottles everywhere all right uh, last thing I wanted to show you is this wiring. So down here, again, more wiring, but down here I'm using a battery bank. So one trick that I've learned with seven days to die is that if you take a generator, load it up with some engines, refuel it really quick, and you run that into an electric timed relay and run that into a battery bank, which then powers everything. So basically from there it goes into a switch that powers everything. So what I do is technically right now it's running off the battery, although it's not consuming any battery because there's I think there's a glitch in the game, but whatever. So what I do is I, I set this timer so it only turns on for two hours a day, meaning two hours a day my generator is powering my battery bank and charging it. So for two hours it's going to charge the batteries. The rest of the day it's going to run off of those batteries, deplete each individual battery to charge the rest to run the rest of the base. And then for those two hours it's going to kick on and it's going to recharge those batteries again. It actually is a net gain. It costs significantly less fuel to recharge batteries and use those batteries to charge your base. Now normally I'm consuming 148 watts of power. I would actually probably need this to be on more like eight hours a day. Uh, in other words, using using gas power for eight hours to charge it. But but what happens in these games, and I don't know if this is a multiplayer issue or not, over time the wiring and the, the depletion cal calculations get confused. And when you have this setup where it goes a generator to a timer to a battery bank to power, um, it ends up flipping over to consume the power, but it doesn't actually withdraw battery power. So you ended up getting, in a way, unlimited battery draw. That's not always, you know, it's inconsistent. Sometimes you log on and it's drawing on batteries, other times it's not. But either way, the concept is simple. You can run, like I said, six, eight hours of battery to charge it, and then the rest of it, or of, of fuel to charge it, and then the rest of it run off of batteries. And that is a way to save a ton of fuel. All right. Well, I think that is the base. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to show you down here. Otherwise, we just got a few minutes until Blood Moon. Um, oh, yeah, that's right. I was making some robotic turrets. Let's get that guy. Uh, where's the other one? Right there. And then I'm going to show you the last bit that I like to do. Let me get these modified. Complete, modify, complete, and I'm going to open that stack, I'm going to reload, close that door, and I'm going to show you where I put the junk turrets up top, that's one thing I didn't talk about, gosh I always call them junk turrets, robotic turrets, hold R, select the robotic turret ammo, the AP, all right, so up top, one advantage of this base, or one thing to keep in mind, is at the top you are somewhat exposed to vultures. Uh, so I always like to spec into in in intellect, and I like to get my, my robotic turrets maxed. And then what I'll do is I'll put a robotic turret, and it's kind of debatable where I put them. Um, I'm going to put one of them right here. It's like you have to decide. So that one's going to cover this area. And then I'm going to put another one right here. So now I got full coverage over here. So now if I'm anywhere over here and a vulture comes after me, it's going to get it's going to get shot by my robotic turrets. They provide coverage. Now I intentionally place them here so that way they don't shoot the zombies coming in because I don't need them to shoot zombies. I really just need them to um, take care of any 
vultures that come across. Uh, probably the last thing, so we are built right here in road. I did intentionally space that out and try to plan that out so we're on a road, but conveniently and not planned is we are right next to this building, which is where we put our dew collectors. This is a 9x, I think this might be a mod. Each of these is 9 bottles of water, so this is 27 bottles of water if we open that bundle. Another 27, and another 27. We did obviously level the roof of this building and drop a land claim on it so it doesn't uh the weird happen and i don't know one of the other guys that we that i play with must have just gotten this super corn because that wasn't here yesterday uh that's awesome super corn is nice because it helps you make glue now that we have a water source we needed a renewable source of of glue and super corn is it now you can see there's lots of lighting everywhere there is lots of lighting, and I didn't talk about that, but it is pretty well lit up. You can see some of the lighting is obvious, but some of it maybe not so much. Like these two right here, maybe you noticed that before, but notice how the light passes through the blocks. It doesn't stop. So I'm taking advantage of these little corners under here to hide these spotlights so they don't take damage to help light up the area around. So that way when zombies approach, you can clearly see them. Uh, same as on this other side, I did the same thing. Spotlight there, spotlight there. Um, and then I also threw, you'll notice, some candles in this room down here, and then in the other corner, that way we have permanent lighting. Yeah, some candles down here as well for permanent lighting during the day. Alright, I'm just going to make sure I am refueled. Refueled. We got Blood Moon coming up here in a couple minutes. Um, I am going to, like I said, I've been playing with some of the guys from the Rat Pack. It's been slowing down a little bit. We had some pretty big, busy Blood Moons earlier. It might just be me this time. I don't see anybody else. Uh, and some of these guys you might recognize from Imperion if you're familiar. Again, a lot of these are from the Anvil server. That's for most. That's This is an Anvil hosted server. And JTKE Gaming is the guy who is hosting the server. So... Yeah, 4,700 level 58, 4,758 kills, 5 deaths, unfortunately. Uh, 4 of those came in 1 Blood Moon. We were kind of really rushed and had to quickly get a base up. It was actually this one. Uh, we didn't have it fully fully set up. I actually screwed up and I missed some of the wiring. and I got a couple deaths the first plus Blood Moon. It's fine. Uh, we ran out of ammo. It was quite the uh, fun endeavor. And then I had one other death running a POI and... Uh, yeah, it was really early on, and I ran into a radiated biker and just wasn't ready for it. But other than that, I've handled this, again, war warrior difficulty, warrior difficulty pretty well. Um, yeah, so that's that. I'm going to use the SMG. The SMG. Uh, last thing about this base that I always tell people is the key to making it work is no explosions in the tunnel. So, um, you know, when demolishers come, it's easiest just to let them run in the tunnel. Let them go in there, let them get zapped and shot by the darts, and they will die. Darts do not set off the explosion, bullets do. Uh, same as cops. Cops are spitters, they're good to range a little bit. Um, trying to think what else. Yeah, I think that's kind of about it. Um, no, I usually don't use any explosives either. No grenades, rocket launchers, explosive arrows, stuff like that. We'll see how that pink truck survives. We will see how that pink truck survives. Alright, I'm going to head into a Discord chat with the rat group and see if anyone else is, just in case anyone else is going to be on. So you might see... Um, somebody might join the chat randomly during the, during the Blood Moon. And if they do, that's okay. I'll just let them know, hey, we're recording. We're live. All right, I got my repair kits. You can see I got tons of stuff to repair. Steel, electronics. Um, yeah, concrete. Just going over everything. I'm going to repair this really quick there we go we are started blood moon is live i see a guy right there here they come incoming enemies 
Prepare for conflict. All right, it's working. Good. Ah, <laughs> I always get nervous the first one that comes through. Just to make sure. So you can see, look how fast those guys are dying. They get shocked. They get stunned. And they die. And they die. Now, you can shoot them if you want to shoot them like this. For sure. Uh, thing to always obviously watch out for. Sometimes they bang on the walls a little bit. You just got to watch out for that. And sometimes they get confused where to path to. I'm not sure why. But they work pretty well. Yep. Um, I usually perk into the, I think it's advanced engineering. That gives you 75% from electrical trap kills. See that at the top. Uh, that's always helpful. Loot bags, yes. Since it kills, it, since everyone that comes into it basically dies, I mean, dies pretty quickly. Uh, you get a lot lot of loot bags. Since there's no lo loops in this, no drop mechanics, no cheese kind of built into it, like everyone that enters dies. Um, yeah, I'm just going to let them go. They're stunned. Dead, dead, dead. Sometimes they get stuck between the electric fence posts because there are gaps to stand there. And then they don't tri trip the trip wires to... Uh, to get to trip the dart traps, so that happens. All right, time to shoot him now. We gotta kill some faster, go faster this time. This is one of my favorite spots to sit on this base simply because it gives you a view of them coming up and you get the front view of them. You get to look at them right in the face, you get to see who they are, you get to shoot them in the head. Um, you can see them coming up the stairs so you can sometimes just line them up like, just like that. Yeah, it's a light blood moon though. Unfortunately, with uh, with only one person on at the base, uh, it's I think it's like eight per person, sixty four max. So when you start getting, when you start getting, maybe it's a little more than that. But when you start getting like more than one person at the base, it really starts stacking up with zombies in here. Demolishers. I hope I see at least a demolisher or two. I am game stage. What am I? Game stage four fifty six. getting stuck somewhere. And yes, there is a buried motorcycle right there. Uh, somebody else logged in and left it there, so uh, I needed to encase it in concrete so it didn't uh, allow zombies to burrow anymore underneath it. So eventually when, eventually when that person comes back, that, kind of, that, that won't be there. Okay, so we're an hour into this. I'm just going to check the repair on those dart traps or these fences. See, I'm at 110 of 200. That's okay. I'm going to let it go for a little bit longer. 40, 49. 49. 49 is the lowest number that a dart that an electric fence will get to. Once an electric fence post gets to 49, it must be repaired and it will no longer work. It'll make a weird sizzling noise. It'll start flaming out blue sparks. Um, it'll, it'll, yeah, so there you go. See? Vulture. Oh, there's... Uh-huh. 
<laughs> Dead vulture. All right. Yeah, I don't know why some of them are sitting there. Wake up. Wake up. Look at that, another one set up here. Let me grab my knife. I always use bone. I'm just going to repair that fence down. What's it down to? 86. That's a good spot. Not even damage. Not even damage. And it's taking one point of damage. So. Sounds like they decided they wanted to bang on it a little bit. Now you can see there's obviously a lot of capacity that this base could handle in terms of zombies. A lot of capacity. You could be shoving tons and hordes of zombies in this base, no problem. Yep, he's dead. I mean, it only takes but a few seconds for them to die. been another vulture I heard the oh you're able to get a line of sight down there somewhere interesting Senses have picked up something, says the drone. Probably a lot of a lot of dead zombies. Yeah, but I've used this horde base in uh, Darkness Falls, uh, where you get really crazy hordes. Um, Actually, if you look at my YouTube channel from a couple of years ago, you'll find a few a few of those videos of Blood Moons. Oh, it got me. You'll find a few videos of Blood Moons from Darkness Falls. Uh, with the hardest demons, the biggest bosses that show up on Blood Moon. Uh, no problem handling them. Uh, you just got to make the base just a little bit bigger. This doorway you make three blocks wide instead of two blocks wide. Uh... And then maybe a block taller. Oh, there must be a cop somewhere. So yeah, this works there as well. That's actually where I came up with the addition of putting this cage in to begin with. It was from Darkness Falls. Uh, because you kind of need the safety. <laughs> Not sure why they're congregating out there. Seems to be some pathing issues in multiplayer sometimes. Got a few loot bags, so not too bad. Um, again, this is a little bit slower Blood Moon than, I've, than we've had in previous ones when we get four or five people here.
Ooh, radiated cop. I heard a doggy. I've got a bad feeling about this. There's a cop congregation. Must be a box of donuts over there or some shit. Yeah, there you go. There's a cop explosion. Alright, come on. Zombie, zombie, zombies. Someone's hitting the wall. Right in the back of the head. Uh oh. He's gonna spit at me. Alright, come at me, Vulture. You're about to get shot. See, there, you just shot. I didn't even have to do it. See, what happens with dogs is sometimes while they're getting shot. They are uh, below the tripwire line, or they're not triggering a tripwire at all, so they don't get hit with the dart trap. So that's the only thing to watch out with for with dogs is sometimes they don't always they don't always trigger the dart traps, but they do get shocked. I think I got my drone. Blood Moon is almost over. Okay, so Blood Moons on this server are, they are short. Uh, they start at 2200 and they end at, they end at 200 hours. So we only have 45 minutes of game time left. Um, it is, a, it is, what is it, 18 hour days and 4 hour, no, sorry, 20 hour days, 4 hour nights. That's how it's set. Warrior difficulty, oops, my gun is broke. Warrior difficulty, so the zombies do take a little bit extra damage. And I do a little bit less damage. Cops making a mess of everything. Radiated cop.
I should check my repairs. 138, not needed, but I'm going to do them anyway. Yep, sure, we're just going to do them all. Gosh, you cop. I didn't really use that much ammo this 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 uh, blood me either. Darts are relatively inexpensive too. Uh, when it comes to making those, so it's like three iron and one clay uh, and a forge to make them. But you got to keep in mind that that one clay in a forge is actually one-fifth of the clay that you mine because when you put clay in a forge it's five to one one clay put into forge yields five so it's really cheap clay wise uh in this blood moon i'll use a few thousand darts you know you can mine enough iron for this blood moon in less than five five minutes so in less than five minutes of, of mining you'll have enough clay and iron for this blood moon and if you just dedicate you know go out mining for a half an hour one time and then you'll have plenty you'll have plenty of of uh you know resources to supply several blood blood moons worth i mean it's been a while since i've mined iron and i've got thousands upon thousands of darts stacked up okay well that was the blood moon i'm gonna go down here and i'm gonna whoops Loot that and swap that, not the other way around. Um, this is a good exp demonstration of why I plated everything, because when cops blow up, they create craters. And if you get another cop exploding in the same area, the craters get bigger and bigger, and pretty soon zombies get stuck and they start digging and burrowing and doing weird shit. So that's why I plated it all the way out here, so that way they don't do anything nearby. All right, so now all that's left is to not die in this tunnel and loot everything. Um, go around to the other side. Sometimes keys get stuck and it drags you into the tunnel. Where's my drone? Come Ready here, buddy. All right, that's it. That's the loot bags. That was the base. If we go around, we look at damage. I mean, you know, a little bit, barely. They, it got hit a couple times. There's very little damage. I mean, most of this floor damage is me. Is from my shooting. My guns hitting it. Uh, very, very little block damage over here. That's where most of the zombies came from. Some of them came from over here. Again... Very, very little block damage anywhere. Um, if we look at the dart traps, they were all full. So I had 1,500, which is the max, in each dart trap. Um, since they're all synced, let's look. So these two I used 330. These two on the other side. So uh, 330, 660, that's a little over 1,300 in this one. Uh, I used a 25, so that's 100, that's 1,400. Uh, call it 200, so 1600, and then another 170, call it another 7, 700, so you're talking a little over 2,000, 2,300 darts is what I used, that whole blood moon. Alright, well, I think that's going to wrap it up. I think I explained exactly how to build this guy. Again, start with the steps, measure across, do the other steps. I always build the tunnel first, build the walk path, and then build the rest of it up from there. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I hope that was helpful. I hope you enjoyed what you saw. Of course, let me know if I can help with anything. Otherwise, take care. Thanks for joining, and hope to see you next time. Take care, everyone. Thanks. Bye.